Hey everybody, here's part two of veins with the upper extremities. Today we're going to talk about the head and the thorax. And we're going to mention a little bit on the uh, sinuses of the brain. So let's get started with the head. Here's the head. Now, the guy, it's supposed to be a skull, um, and it's not too attractive, but you're looking at the right side of his face, be like this, he's just looking that way. Um, if you remember from part one, we talked a little bit about the, uh, the jugular veins and the superior thyroid vein. So let's just start there. We have the internal jugular vein. It's going to come up through the neck and then branch off into the superior thyroid vein, which is going to drain deoxygenated blood from the thyroid gland and uh, send it to the superior vena cava. Actually, all of this blood is going to the superior vena cava, which is right down here and eventually make its way to the heart. So, the internal jugular vein is going to continue upwards after it branches from the su superior thyroid vein it's going to come up and branch into the lingual vein. The lingual vein is uh, right right down here um, beneath your tongue it's going to drain deoxygenated blood from from your bottom portion of your mouth uh, from your mouth yeah um, okay so then uh, the the, inter the ex internal jugular vein is going to continue, continue more upward and branch into the facial vein. The facial vein is going to cover a lot of surface area on the face. You know, you got your your eye region, your nose, around your mouth. Um, the uh, What's interesting about the facial vein is that if you have a lot of zits, like me, uh, if, uh, if you pop one of them and blood comes out, you likely have uh, busted open some blood vessel, maybe the facial facial vein. Um, the problem with popping your zits like that and exposing the blood vessel is you allow bacteria and uh, dirt junks to get in there and cause some sort of damage or alarm your body and uh, something could go a little haywire. Inflame the tissues of, of your face or even make its way to the brain. So the facial vein is, uh, is, is, is in conjunction with the ophthalmic vein which is going to uh, be part of the, the science, which we'll talk about here. I drew a thing on the, the venous sinus. Uh, the venous sinuses are, um, are, are going to be draining DO2 blood from the brain, and if bacteria get up in there, uh, uh, it could inflame the meninges, and you can get meningitis. Uh, if you get meningitis, it might feel a little bit like you're having a bad hangover. Um, it's very problematic with, with infants. A serious problem could result in very serious problems with uh, an individual if they contract it. Um, so don't pop your zits. Uh, that's the that's lesson. You could get meningitis or you could die or something like that. Um, so facial vein. Coming off of the internal jugular vein. So we have the superior thyroid vein, uh, up from that the lingual vein, and then branching up from that the facial vein. It's covering a lot of your face, draining deoxygenated blood down to the superior vena cava and then back down to the heart. Okay, so uh, the external jugular vein is also going to come up into the head and that's going to branch into the retromandibular vein, which the retromandibular uh, vein is, uh, is going to drain DO2 blood from behind the mandible. Retro meaning behind or in back of and mandibular, mandible. Mandible is your, is your jawbone. So behind the jawbone vein. It's going to drain DO2 blood from there. And that's going to come up and branch uh, into the uh, superficial temporal vein. So I think you got your, your temporal region of your brain, your skull. No, you have the vein as well. And this is true for both sides of the face. You have, or the, the head, I mean. Uh, this guy's looking to the right. Well, it's also, if you're looking to the, or he's looking to the left. If you're looking to the, to the right, like this guy is, he has the same veins on both sides of his head, just like that guy. So, again, external jugular vein coming up, branching into the retromandibular vein, and then that's going to branch into the superficial temporal vein. Okay, we'll go over that one more time. Internal jugular vein is going to come up, branch into superior thyroid vein, come up even more, branch into the lingual vein, and then come up even more once again, and to the facial vein. Um, then the uh, external vein is going to come up and branch, or the external jugular vein is going to come up and branch into the uh, retromandibular vein, and then 
up even more into the superficial temporal vein. So, you know, granted, this isn't everything, and this picture isn't going to show you an exact uh, picture of what it's going to look like when you cut your face open and look at your veins, but uh, it, it, it gets the job done. Sometimes you can see some of these veins in someone's face. Um, it, it's a pretty neat thing to, th to think about, that you have these little tubes running through you, carrying a whole bunch of juice in your face. Okay, so we mentioned the, the sinuses, the venous sinuses. This guy, he's got an ugly picture of the sinuses within his brain, and uh, there's a whole bunch of the sinuses. We're not going to talk too much about them. There's this, there's, there's, a, there's a whole bunch of them, and they're going to drain deoxygenated blood from the brain. So we may talk about that a little bit when we talk about the arteries of the, of the brain. So but let's, let's carry on to the thorax. Now, I'm going to stand over here. The thorax... Uh, here you, you see the vertebral column, which is this structure right in the middle, and then there's a whole bunch of structures coming out of them on either side. Those are the ribs. So you're looking at the rib cage. Um, there's also this Y-shaped structure, which is the superior vena cava and branching off into the uh, brachiocephalic veins, uh, if you recall from part one of this series. So from the superior vena cava, there's going to be a little tube tube guy that comes out, and that's going to be the uh, azygous vein. The azygous vein is going to run down the left side, or the right side, the right side of the vertebral column, and that's going to drain DO2 blood from the ribs and the vertebral column. The veins within each one of these ribs here, if you can see the blue line, that is, those are the intercostal veins. The intercostal veins are going to drain DO2 blood into the azygous vein, which is going to drain into the superior vena cava and back to the right atrium. Uh, and this is all on the right side, right side of the ribs, right side rib cage. Now on the on the left side we have almost the same terminology. We just put a prefix in the front, a hemi azygous vein, hemi azygous vein along the left vertebral column, and then again you have your intercostal veins as well within these ribs. So the intercostals are going to drain into the hemiazygous, which are then going to, via a little junction, um, the hemiazygous is going to drain into the azygous vein and then to the superior vena cava once more. The tricky part is this, this top portion here of the left side of the rib cage is going to be draining into the accessory hemiazygous vein. So that's just for these few uh, top left ribs uh, on the left side. Yeah left side. Accessory hemiazygous, and then below that is the hemiazygous, all on the left side. And then on the right side, you have your azygous vein, which all of this is receiving deoxygenated blood from the intercostal veins. Intercostal veins, inside the ribs. Okay. And then uh, from the azygous back to the superior vena cava. Not, not too much to take in, but... Uh, but uh, it, it can be confusing at first, and once you get it down, it, it would be it would be easy as can be. So that's the head, the thorax, and then a mentioning of the sinuses of the brain.